Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about contextual action bars. So what is one? Uh, quite simply, it's just going to be a custom menu that's going to show up uh, in our action bar that's going to replace it whenever we select a, a, a certain view or a set of views. Um, so our example in our, in our uh, Gmail app right here, right? we might have a whole bunch of, of uh, messages. But when we click on you know, a few of them, then you notice the context menu here changes. It no longer sort of lets you create new ones and search for things. But now it's going to ask, for these set of ones that, that you've selected, uh, what do you want to do with them? Do you want to do you want to trash them? Do you want to mark them as unread? You know, any one of these things. And, and we see that this menu really, um, it depends on the context, right? They have something selected. We want different, uh, different uh, options, right? Um, back in our app, what we're going to be doing uh, quite simply is uh, allowing it so that when we click on the Hello World text view in the middle here, um, we're going to let it change the font size, right? Either bigger or smaller. Okay, so how do you get these things to show up? Um, in typical usage, uh, they're going to show up when we do a long press, right? And today we're just going to be looking at long pressing single items. But it's sort of a natural extension if you had a whole list view to be able to select multiple items. And in fact, it's an, an extension that, that in a future lesson, when we learn about list views, it's one that you'll be able to make uh, with a little bit of research on your own. So good stuff. All right, so how do we make these? Uh, basically comes down to three different steps here. Um, so the first thing is, is that we want to be um, clicking. So inside our on click uh, listener here, um, we want to start what's called an action mode. And an action mode is what actually, uh, what actually does the, the heavy lifting, so to speak. It's, it's the new action bar. All right. um, any callback or anything that we want to have happen within there um, is going to be in this inner class here, the action mode dot callback. And that's how we're going to say, uh, tell our app what to do whenever they click certain uh, buttons within that mode and so on. So we're going to have to create our, our own class that implements this callback interface. Right, and we'll put in lots of good stuff in there. And then finally, um, we'll see that, that by setting the action mode to null uh, when we're done um, is going to help us so that we don't have to uh, continue recreating them uh, all the time. So a little bit of an efficiency issue, not a big deal. All right, so what do we need to do here? We'll start off by making a field of type action mode, right? Um, so that when we, um, when we do have a long click, uh, that we can create that action mode, um, set up our callback, even give it a title and so on. Um, let's go ahead and, and do this in code. Okay, okay in my app, uh, I'm going to go right up to the top of main activity here and make a field. And we're going to call this guy uh, my action, oops, my action mode. And it will be of type action mode itself. And we'll go ahead and we'll, um, we'll import action mode here. All right. And then uh, we need to set a listener. Um, we typically set our listeners you know, in, in onCreate. So I'm going to go inside onCreate here. And I already have a field for, my, for, my, um, for that hello world text view. So I'm going to go ahead and set the listener. So my hello text view dot set and you'll see here that, that we're going to be using on long click listener. Right? Um, I could put this, but since I only have one, I'm just going to make an anonymous one right here. So that's going to be a new on long click listener. And I'll let that stub that in for us. I'll import it. Uh, so on long click, what, what do I want to do here? So, so first of all is I need to create um, an instance of a class that, that implements the, the callback here. So I'm going to call mine my action mode callback. Right? And that, that'll be a class that I'm going to have to define in a second here. All right, so that guy, um, I will uh, instantiate a new one here. So a new my action mode callback. Okay, second. I will start the action mode. So if, if I have a, a method here, start action mode, and I pass in that callback, that's going to return an action mode. So it basically constructs one. 
and then I can configure it however I want. Uh, so for instance, one thing that I could do is I could set a title, but we can see there's a few different things that I could do. I could set a, a subtitle for instance. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and set a title and I can pass it a resource ID. So r.string dot and somewhere I have one here. So menu context title is one that I set up. Um, that'll essentially say something about, about you know, changing the font size. Uh, and, and that's all I need. Uh, I am gonna change this from false to true. Um, when we say true, it actually gives us a, a, a short vibration in, in our device. So what we'd call sort of tactile feedback here um, on the long press. All right, so what do I need next? Uh, this my action mode callback. Uh, so this is a class that I need to define. I can make it as an, um, as an inner class right here inside this method, or I could make it just a nested class within, within uh, my main activity class, and that's what I'm gonna choose to do uh, since it's a little bit longer. So let's make a class here called my action mode callback. And this is going to implement uh, an inner class here within the, the action mode. So it's going to be action mode dot callback. And since it's implementing that, that uh, interface, I need to add any methods here. And we'll see that's going to stub in a few. So create, prepare, um, unclicked, and then on destroy. Uh, so some of these, of course, are, are, are more, um, more important than others. Uh, uncreate, we've seen ones like this for menus. And for a menu, we would typically do something like, like get an inflator and then reflate some, inflate some sort of resource. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do right here. So I will ask uh, my action mode, I'll say, hey, could you get a menu inflator for me? And then on that inflator, I'll call the inflate. And we'll see that it takes a menu resource and then the menu itself. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. The resource is gonna be r.menu. And I'm gonna to have to make one here, so I'm gonna to have to make a context menu. Uh, doesn't yet exist, I'll come back and, and take care of it soon. Uh, and then the second parameter is, is just the, the menu, and that's the one that was passed into this method. So, so um, no problems there, All right? And on this, once I've done that, I'll say uh, return true, because I, I've, um, I successfully did it. Uh, on prepare, I'm not gonna worry about, so the default right there is, is fine. Um, on action item clicked. So this is sort of the big one. So for this mode and for a certain menu item that was clicked, what should I do? All right, so um, we want to change text size, All right? So a little, little bit of work on, on this guy right here. Uh, the text size as it starts off uh, is a certain number of, of pixels. It's actually a certain number of DPs. Um, but if I want to change the text size, it turns out that I can only uh, change it with pixels. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of, of conversion here. Uh, so let's start off with the first thing, and that's I wanna store um, the current size of my, my font here. So I'm gonna have a variable called text size, uh, and that's just gonna be my hello text view, and I'm gonna get the text size. And again, it says the size in pixels, so I'm gonna to have to be careful about that. Uh, great, okay. Um, so they passed in an item, which one was it, right? So was it the was it the the little up arrow, the down arrow? Um, you know what? What am I doing here? So I want to uh, switch off of my items ID. All right, so get item ID, and there's essentially going to be two different things here. So I'm going to have an an ID for uh, increasing, and then one for r dot id dot decreasing okay and it's making me think that, it, that I should probably go ahead and and uh, make my my context menu right now right so it's it's still complaining about this here um, you know I want to make sure that I get these names mashed up so I'll get the slides caught up and then we'll 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 come back to this in a second okay uh, so back here so we're gonna be making this inner class that's where we're in the middle of doing right now Let's move forward. So the next thing is going to be um, to define the context menu. So let's let's take a look at it here. And honestly, there is absolutely no difference uh, between a, a context menu and any other menu as far as how you declare it, right? So it's a menu with items in it, all right? So no surprise here. Um, what do the items have? They have IDs, 
they have icons, right? Um, we want to know whether we show them as action, and they have a title. Um, I happen to add a condensed title here just to show you that, that it's an option uh, to do. Um, if there weren't room for the whole title, you could have the condensed one here. But that's just where I chose to, to show it in this, in this um, unit here. Um, not special to context menus whatsoever. Right? So I have one for increase and one for decrease. So what I'd like you to do is, is go ahead and make this new um, context menu, uh, .xml, put it in the menu folder, uh, and, then, and then come back. I'm OK with you just copy and pasting this since you've already had practice with some other menus. All right. So go ahead and do it. OK, so hopefully you, you copy and pasted that in here. I'm going to go back to my main activity. And we'll notice that, that now it recognizes that I have the, the menu here. Uh, I'm going to go in and make sure that, that, these, that these guys are OK. So they are, they are completing. So decrease. Yeah, so it's completing there. So it recognizes the IDs. Um, so what do I want to do in, in each case here? Uh, uh, actually, this pretty much the same thing in each one. Um, so my, my hello text view, I want to set the text size. And you'll notice that there are a couple different uh, options here. One is, is just set it uh, using um, scaled, scaled pixel units. Um, and then the other one is, is to set it uh, to a given size and value um, with different dimensions. right? Um, so since I'm dealing with, with pixels here, uh, with the get text size, I want to I wanna also deal with pixels here. So my unit is going to be a constant from the typed value class. And I'm going to have complex uh, unit and just pixels. Right? And then the size is just going to be text size and then whatever amount I want to increase it. And the slides I said 12, uh, I'll be a little bit bolder here and, and go with 16 pixels. Um, and that will, that will uh, increase my text size uh, appropriately. All right? And then um, since I've successfully uh, responded to the press, I can just go ahead and, and return true. Um, if they say to decrease, as you can imagine, this, this guy is pretty much going to be identical here, only I'm going to decrease the text size. Uh, hoping the text size is not going to go negative. Uh, hopefully nothing, nothing bad happens there. Um, but that looks good. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. OK, I've launched my emulator. Let's check it here. So if I long press Hello World, you'll see that it changed my, my action bar up here. Uh, let's, let's check the different things. So uh, change font size. And we can see this is increasing pretty rapidly. In fact, we can probably even make it uh, wrap around here. So pretty big. Uh, and we could see what's, you know, we could make it almost disappear uh, and then get it bigger and so on. Uh, uh, we see that our title here changed font size. We see our little icons showing up here for increase and decrease. And I have a, 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 an OK button here, essentially. This comes for free. And when I'm done, I click it. And that brings me just to my regular uh, action bar. Okay. Uh, very good. That's almost it. And we could be done here, um, except that it's worth just, just showing you one more thing for, for good practice. Um, so when we're done, typically what we want to do is, is when we destroy it, we want to set the action mode uh, to null. And what that allows us to do is just put a little, a little check in here so that you know if, if, it, if it isn't null, right? So if we already have one, then just return false. Don't bother recreating it. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, it, uh, if it is null, right, then we can go ahead and, and make a new one. Okay, that's all we have for you. See you next time.